and the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. I'll ask if there's any apologies to be recorded. One from Councillor McKenna, I'm aware of. Councillor Porteous has just arrived, so she's not even late. So I'll move that we accept the apology from Councillor McKenna. Is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Councillor Hesse. All those in favour, against, declare that carried unanimously. I'll notify the citizens in the gallery tonight that our proceedings are webcast um, live onto YouTube and recorded there in posterity. We let you know about that so that you're aware of the legal ramifications of things that you might say in the public domain. I'll ask if there's any disclosures of interest from councillors tonight. Any declarations? None? Excellent. I'll ask everyone to please stand for a moment of quiet contemplation. Thank you. Please be seated. Councillors, before we get on to the agenda items, we need to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting of the 26th of February. Are there any corrections or clarifications to those minutes? Councillor Passes? Yes, Mr Mayor. I'd like to raise... Um, I might seek some clarification from the staff on this, from yes. uh, maybe Ian. On the Code of Conduct matter last week, or the last meeting, the reviewer's recommendation was a public apology. Is that public apology going to be given as the comments were made on live stream in open council? Is the apology going to be given? Point of order, I don't think it's on live minutes stream issue. and in open council. Okay, I've got a question through the chair from Councillor Passes, a point of order from Councillor Kiat. I'll hear from Councillor Kiat first. Uh, my point of order is I don't think that this relates to confirmation of the minutes. I think this is a question about a resolution. I'm going to rule that it does relate to the minutes because it's an item contained within the minutes. I'll go to Mr Naylor for an answer to Councillor Passes's question. Uh, through the Chair, the recommendation was the apology be in the minutes, not a public apology, and you'll find it's at the last page of the minutes. Does that answer your question, Councillor? Well, it's not a public apology. It was made... Well, OK, Mr Mayor, I just would like um, the councillors who were on the former Asheville Council to take note. They had me drawn and quartered point of order, point for of order, things I didn't point even do. And yet order this, this councillor doesn't have to um, apologise. Yes. I've made my point so you can make all the point of orders you want. Call the meeting to order. Councillors, is there any amendment to the minutes? There's no amendment. Will someone move that they be adopted? Moved by Councillor Hesse, seconded by Councillor York. All those in favour, against, declare that carried. I'm against the one. Councillor Passis will be recorded as being against the adoption of the minutes. Councillor Stamoulis also against the adoption of the minutes. Um, I will go to... Um, now, I'm just going to ask for confirmation from the, gen from the CEO who... Um, Pull me aside on the way in to let me know that our minute takers are actually required to depart the council meeting tonight at 9 p.m. Um, and I'll just ask for clarification from the CEO about that and then ask for the cooperation of councillors in adhering to that deadline. Right. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Dean, you turn your microphone on, Michael. Two, two staff are required to be in Queanbeyan tomorrow and they need to drive down tonight. So for big management reasons, they need to leave here by 9 o'clock. I think that's a reasonable objective given we've got a limited number of items on the agenda. Could I just ask a, a question yeah. through the chair? Yes. Um, is there a contingency plan if uh, we have to continue the meeting? There is. I'll put that. Okay, that's been answered. No. Right. The CEO will be recording the minutes <laughs> if, if required. That's the sort of hands-on approach we want. Councillors, the first mayoral minute tonight is one is a very important one of recognition of community service. Um, I'm very pleased to um, note that we have here representatives from the State Emergency Services. Can I ask where my copy of the Mayoral Minutes is? Thank you. 
And um, very importantly, we have here Mr Michael Carney. Marrickville SES has recently farewelled Mr Carney, their unit commander, after 28 years of service. Michael has served as the unit commander for the past 20 of those years. He was prompted to join the SES after a major storm in Mount Druitt when the local SES were extremely short-staffed. Wanting to make a difference to his local community, Michael volunteered to help out. That volunteer role turned into a five-year stint with Mount Druitt unit before his transfer to Marrickville. And as unit commander, Mr Carney was responsible for running all of the business operations of the Marrickville branch and coordinating all responses to local emergencies. His time in the SES saw him in charge during the 1999 Sydney hailstorm, which saw 1,000 requests for assistance from the Marrickville SES. Michael was also instrumental in obtaining council backing for the construction of the new Marrickville SES headquarters and played a key role in advising during the design of that building. Aside from some travel plans, Michael intends to remain involved in the SES with some project work, including hopefully recreating his success by helping Mount Druitt approach council. Mount Druitt or Marrickville? Marrickville. Marrickville. Okay. Mount Druitt. Mount Druitt, right. Approach council, we can't help the Mount Druitt SES though. <laughs> Approach council for a rebuild of the headquarters there. And I think it's also important to note that Michael is a significant figure in the Marrickville community. He's someone who's known on Marrickville Road and Illawarra Road by everybody in the community. And on behalf of council, I want to thank you very much for your dedication to our local community over so many years. And to that end, I'd like to move that council commend Michael Carney for his long and distinguished years of service with the SES, SES and wish him the best in his future endeavours. Thank you very much, Michael. Before I invite Michael up to receive his um, recognition, I'd like to open the floor to councillors. Councillor Iskander. I really like to say from my bottom of my heart and on behalf of my community, thank you very much. You made the difference and I do remember the difficult circumstances and the hard days. You've been at the water road and you did that job from very limited resources. So I asked your uh, colleagues, how they feel about you leaving. And you know, I know some of them very well. They really were in tears and they said you were like a father to them. So I'm very proud of that, very proud of my community celebrating your success and continuing in a very good, strong team left after you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Further contributions from councillors? Councillor Steer, then Councillor Passis, then Councillor Hesse, then Councillor Macri. I've had occasion to call upon the SES um, during a, a time of high winds when a limb fell off a tree in my garden. And um, they came and they were very helpful and they cut it up and, and, um, and, um, and, and got it off the road for us. And, and um, that's just one example of the things that the SES do. And they do a lot of things in terms of um, terrible weather and demanding conditions. And um, they do it all voluntarily. I think it's a wonderful service. And I think the effectiveness of Marrickville SES has a lot to do with Michael Carney's efforts over the years. Um, I know he's set it up to continue to be a successful, helpful, and um, distinguished organisation, and I wish him all the best for his future. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Passes. Yes, I would also like to thank Mr Carney. I don't know him, but from what I've heard, I know our guys here, Mr Peter Kay and our guys here in Haverfield, in the inner west, Asheville area, how helpful they are. You all seem like mates and you all work together when you can, and it's very much appreciated because when we do have terrible storms and incidents. The police can't be everywhere. And if you guys are not there, you know, people are left to their uh, own devices. 
and you are aware just as much as I am of our ageing population. And um, what I think this council should do more is maybe advertise the fact, give you a little bit more work, let people know you're there and let them know what you're there for and what you can help them with, as I said, especially the elderly people in our areas. Again, God bless you. Good luck and all the best for the future. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Hesse. Thanks, uh, Chair. And thank you, Michael. And I know you, know, you are a team as well. You, you've got your uh, team of volunteers, but also Carol, who's uh, worked very closely and supported you over these many years. It was a pleasure meeting you when I was first on Marrickville Council, and I know your advocacy for the new SES headquarters was very strong. But I have to say that you've done that in a, in a really constructive and engaging way. Uh, I don't think there was any bullying. It was advocating for the important services that you and all the other volunteers provide to our community in the Marrickville area. Um, more recently, of course, you've had occasion to talk on Radio Skid Row from time to time, which has always been a joy. And I think it indicates the depth of thought that goes into advising our community about how to be safe, um, safe in storms and safe generally. And that requires a great team, and a great team requires someone to bring it all together, and you've been that person. No doubt the person uh, following you has very big uh, boots to fill, but I'm sure that with your support they'll fill them as well as you've done, because you've, you'll, you'll have set it up for them to do that, because you're a planner, and that's a great thing. So, Michael, it's not really, uh, what's that saying? It's not really uh, goodbye, it's au revoir. So I think, I'm sure, for, for, um, for Maracle SES in our community, because I know that you'll be there uh, with Carol, contributing to the Maracle community more broadly. And I look forward to that. And um, I look forward, as I'm sure that all the other councillors who are having to do with the Maracle area, look forward to working with you and uh, offer you our support to continue that great work that you've done. So thank you from me and I'm sure our community as well. Thank you. And finally, Councillor Macri. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, my association with uh, Michael probably started when I did get on council and were invited down there as a council to see the conditions they were trying to service the community in. It was an old, uh, I think it was a dairy farm. The old, the old building there on Red Eastern Road, and they used to milk cows in it. And Michael had a dedicated team of keen individuals, and they were all excited and very keen, but he was limited by what he could do because they couldn't cope with the numbers. So they were really turning people away that wanted to help the community. And then he started a process to try and actually achieve a new SES. In the meantime, the SES continued to assist council at every corner, particularly at all of our community events, but they did all of our traffic control, our management of our festivals, made them safe, and were part partaking as part of the community. And they did that. And it was a number of years that passed, from 2004, when I became mayor in 2012, with the support of all of my, my fellow councillors, we acknowledged that the time for waiting was over with the SES, and we had to provide them a home so they could actually help us, help our community. So we started that process and Michael was integral in that part. And I, myself and Councillor Emmanuel Tardoulis, who was a former SES member, I'm very proud of that, along with all the support from councils that were here, well, Sam was the only councillor that was here at the time. There were many other councils I won't name, uh, including Joe Halen, Morris Hanna, and many, many others. Uh, and the Greens were fairly supportive of it as well because they knew how important the community needed this service. And it was, getting the council on side was one thing. Then we had to battle the bureaucracy of the SES. And in no uncertain terms, Michael stood up for the community and the local SES and took them on head on. And having a meeting, I remember the commander that was there at the area and I said to him, mate, I'll tell you something now. If you don't settle on something, I can't park one and a half million dollars of community funds forever here. We need to settle on this and get going. Otherwise, there are other people that want this money. And it was through Michael's influence and persuasion that we were able to deliver a fantastic facility for the community and for all. And he leaves the SES at Marrickville. I don't know whether he'll ever really leave it. 
because I think he's still there every Wednesday, uh, a much bigger, a much more equipped, a much more focused team, which is a tribute to him and his professionalism and his can-do attitude and not... He hit brick walls, but he didn't turn it up. He just kept on going and going. And behind every great man, there's an even greater woman, Carol. And Carol is the rock that he's built on and she's down, she was down there in the overalls and everything, helping him and assisting all the way. So I'd just like to say, Michael, thank you for all your work and all the work all the SES units do in our area. It's much appreciated and council is here to help you in ever which way we can. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Michael, I don't want to embarrass you, but if you would like to say a few words, we'd love to hear from you. Alternatively, or perhaps in addition, we'd also love to hear from Peter Kay. So do you, one or both of you like to come forward? Oh, I'll, I'll take on this first. Um, I'm very humbled about um, getting into the acknowledgement. Um, when we work with council, it's not about SES and council, it's about a partnership which we've built over the years. And I hope that partnership will keep going in the future. Um, Marrickville is a very safe community. We do a lot of work with planning. Um, my team goes to the local management committee all the time. Uh, we're on the flood plan committee and we always look at the safety aspects of the, the community. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank all the councillors, past and present, who um, helped me through my career as well. Um, and I'm still around, I'm not gonna go away. So if something that happens, I'll be there with um, my Irish Joe rules on if I need to. But um, yeah, mainly just as a as a spokesperson and a <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Mayor Councillors. <coughs> just a few words. You are a very blessed council. Uh, two SES units uh, to look after the inner west. Um, just the way the amalgamation brought the two units together. Um, as the um, unit controller for Ashford Leichhardt, I've been um, working with Michael since the, um, uh, the merger. We were actually in quite separate zones and we had a, we worked with backs to each other. Um, everything that's been said this evening by the councillors um, carries significant heartfelt um, uh, support and weight, not just for Michael, but we felt it from an SES point of view. Both the units have enjoyed great support from the former councils and we're seeing that in the, um, in the merged council. So for that, thank you very much. Um, Michael has received all the appropriate and well-deserved um, recognition and accolade from the, uh, for the wider SES because it is a very tough role. Uh, leading volunteers has just got harder and harder, but I can tell you, um, councillors, that when we know that at the highest level of our community in terms of our elected leadership, that the SES is genuinely valued, it makes all the difference all the way through from the leadership to the new members coming on board. So thank you for the recognition tonight for uh, Michael and Carol, and thank you for your wider support for the SES. Thank you. And Michael, can I please ask you to come forward so that you can receive our recognition? Lovely if all council meetings began in that sort of tone. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome to stick around for the rest of the proceedings, but I can tell you it's downhill from here. <laughs> One further mayoral minute tonight, councillors, is in relation to a proposal that's come forward from the United Chambers of Commerce across the inner west that council officers have been progressing and which I think it's important to give official endorsement to. Um, recently, local businesses and chambers and associations from across the council area have begun working with council strategic planning and ec economic development unit staff to develop a proposal to prepare a comprehensive database of local business operators in the inner west local government area. I want to note that um, during the amalgamation process, Richard Pearson and Rick Hart initiated a quarterly meeting with, all, with representatives of all chambers. I've continued that process on. Um, 
following our election and I think it's been a constructive and useful thing for them to have initiated. In essence, the business chambers are hampered by the fact that they do not have a database of local businesses that they can contact, um, mobilise, consult with and recruit to join the chamber. And we all know that our chambers of commerce would be more effective organisations if they had a larger membership base. And so uh, all of the chambers listed in the, mayor, in the backgrounds of the mayoral minute across the local government area um, uh, have proposed collectively that we fund them to be able to undertake that data collection process. The project will support business to engage on various projects and develop a better understanding of impediments to undertaking business in the inner west. The database will be the first of its kind for the inner west local government area. The project can be run by the Inner West Business Inc, the combined parent body for our Chambers of Commerce that has been established, which is a not-for-profit entity. Um, I, I want to make one minor amendment to the background to the Mayoral Minute and uh, to the substance of the motion. Rather than Council being the owner of the database with full and free access granted to the business chambers and associations, the actual proposal is to reverse that. that the business chambers will be the owners of the database with council being able to access it where necessary. That's important for them to be able to make proper use of it and to gain funding from the New South Wales Chamber of Commerce to support their activities. Council officers have already identified $30,000 from existing funds that can be used to contribute towards this work. The New South Wales Business Chamber is interested in contributing to projects that flow from the data collection, for example, destination marketing. So to that end, I'd like to recommend that Council endorse the project between council, between council staff and local business chambers to establish a local business database to be owned by the chambers. And secondly, produce a report on proposals for use of the database to support business development and growth of chamber membership across the inner west. So I will move that way. I'll go to Councillor York, then Councillor Passis, then Councillor Lockie. Sorry, and then Councillor Porteous. Councillor York. I uh, just wanted to speak briefly in support of the uh, recommendation. I um, have been in a couple of presentations with the Newtown Brisbane Precinct Association and the wider group before they were formally formed into the Inner West Business Inc. And um, I understand the importance of the data for that group. And I think um, the approach that they're taking to um, a data-driven strategy for the broader um, uh, inner West area is a really commendable one. So I'd like to um, speak in favour and um, also commend the work of the staff on the ground who've been supporting um, Inner West Business Inc and the coordinator through Simon Shaw. It's been terrific. Thank you for that. Councillor Passes? Yes, I don't have a problem with it, except I don't understand much of it. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to work. Um, you've got Asheville Business Chamber, Balmain Roselle, Haberfield Business Chamber, Leichhardt and Annandale, Marriott the Chamber, Newtown Precinct, Inner West Asian Business Association. Who are these people? That's what I would like to know. Look, it's a good initiative. Yep. However, I hope it's uh, not $30,000 down the drain and then each person is arguing with each other and looking after their area. I don't know who the Asheville Business Chamber encompasses. Who does it look after? And it's a good idea if we try to, get, try to get them all together and if they're working together, but we still have not married up our outdoor dining policy yep. with the businesses. So we should be getting all this right before we do this or do it at the same time. You can't have rules in one suburb for one restaurant or coffee shop and not the others, which is still, you know, a problem. It's problematic. Rangers are still going down to some businesses and saying, you cannot have your tables and chairs against the facades. So, this is a good idea. I think it needs a little bit more work. I think we should have the names of the people in the positions on these chambers. Yeah. And we should also know um, how are they being supported by the local businesses because here in Asheville, I think there's about five different Asian Chamber of Commerce. So we've got to get who is speaking for who and what is going on. That's, um, I have no problem with it if we start it up. 
I think it's a very good initiative, but we need so much more background. Yeah. Okay, well, I might um, propose a couple of things. Firstly, I'll go to the Manager of Strategic Planning to ask for clarification about how the representatives of these chambers were identified and have been established. Through the Chair, um, we meet with the various chambers on a quarterly basis. In fact, the Mayor, the mayor meets with them. There have been discussions um, over the last year or so about how they can work together. And the proposal came up through these, uh, these uh, chambers and associations who are beginning to work together to, in, to put together a proposal across the whole of the Inner West Council area and we can all benefit from that and information can be shared. And I might further suggest that I know it's come up in the quarterly um, meetings that the chambers are keen to be able to present to all councillors and um, so given Councillor Passis's remarks it might be a useful next step to actually convene that, ask them to prepare a joint presentation but with all chambers in attendance um, for councillors. Um, so unless there's any particular objection to that, I'll, I'll draft that up as an amendment to the um, motion. I had um, Councillor Lockie. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank the Mayor for bringing this to Council tonight and also second um, the comments in support of the motion. Um, this is something I've been speaking to a number of the people involved in the Inner West Business um, Association uh, for quite a number of times over the last year and I, I know they're very keen to have that briefing with councillors to take us through the, the, their vision for the entire LGA and to look at how um, and to how this database is the first step towards pulling together a much broader strategy for economic development across the inner west and looking at that and I know what they're very keen to do as well is to work in a partnership with council on that because we do have an economic development team at council um, we have accepted that this is part of our role to support this with um, across our LGA and at the moment um, I, I do feel like we are missing a lot of that um, visibility around well who are the businesses that are operating in our area what are the, the challenges they're facing what are the opportunities how can we best support our investment in this area that uh, best place our investment in this area rather than going off rather blind because we don't have that um, that vision around it as yet so I do support that and I would also like to add apart from the points that have been picked up in the, the background here is for me a lot of economic development ties very much into placemaking um, and what what is important to people across the inner west. I mean, you think of Newtown, what would it be without King Street? What would Enmore be without Enmore Road? Ashfield without Liverpool Road? And so on and so forth for every one of our town centres. So this is really about supporting that, um, giving more life to our town centres and making sure that they can be the best that they can be. So I'm very happy to support this. Thank you for that. Councillors, I'm aware of the fact that we've been going for half an hour. Is there anyone who wishes to amend the motion or to speak against it? Sorry, Councillor Porteous. Um, look, I'm very supportive of the um, local business communities and I have worked extensively with certainly the Leichhardt and Balmain uh, chambers. Um, but I am quite concerned about this motion for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it's actually asking us to endorse a project which has been presented to us only a couple of hours ago. And uh, I would certainly have liked to have been involved in this earlier in order to be able to ask questions earlier of the council officers, which I really don't think we've, we've had that opportunity to do. And I guess while I understand the intentions are good of the mayor and the mayor has been involved in this, it concerns me that we have a strategic economic development unit which is tasked with actually working uh, strategically with our local businesses. But we really have very little idea what they're doing. And I think as well as a presentation from the chambers, it would be very, be very beneficial for us to have a presentation from the Economic Development Unit uh, as to what the strategic plan is for the next financial year uh, so that we can be part of, of, of an understanding about what, how they're planning to spend council's money on, on improving the um, local businesses. But there's a few other issues I have. Another issue I have is the database issue. Databases are gold uh, in terms of everybody uh, needs and wants databases. And certainly when you're looking at MOUs between different organisations, one of the key issues a lot of the time is who's got to hold the database. And 
there's not enough information here for me to be feeling that that has been properly addressed. I mean, the, the, the fact that we, um, what is going to be in that database, what information is it going to be, what sort of detailed information is going to be there, how is it going to be held if it's going to be held by the chambers, how are we going to get access to it. I really feel there needs to be a bit more drilling down on the database issue. The other issue I have is the $30,000 that's been identified. I don't know where that $30,000 was otherwise going to be spent. Um, we have, because we have no information about what the, the plans are for the economic development unit, we don't know what we don't know. So I feel that I, I feel that I can't uh, agree with point one, endorse the project tonight, because I don't feel I have enough information to be able to do that, and I've got more questions than I've got answers. I'm happy to get a report on the proposal, and I would like to request that we also get a briefing on the uh, strategic uh, planning for the economic development unit so that we can get an understanding about what is being planned, and then we can put this into that context and then carry it forward on that sort of basis. <coughs> it's not against it per se, but concerned and unable to support number one at this stage. Okay. Well, in my usual collaborative fashion, I'm going to propose that number one be, uh, point one be amended to replace endorse with note. And secondly, I'll just seek clarification from the manager of strategic planning. Is this an accurate description of the data collection process and the information that will be recorded? The $30,000 will be used, it's my understanding, to um, hire um, people to go out onto the street and actually identify door by door or premises by premises businesses and record their business name, contact person, phone number, website and other contact details. That would be the totality of information collected, is that correct? Uh, through the chair, those, that information will be collected. There will be other more detailed data about the nature of people's businesses and the like. It, it will be a very substantial database, which we're very excited about. Thank you for that. Can so, I just well, hold on. Um, I'll just before I go to further councillors, for, for, um, go to further councillors. But councillor Porteous, to that end, I'm certainly happy to incorpor incorporate the amendment about receiving a, a briefing from the economic development unit. That's useful. I've taken on board your suggestion about not not endorsing the project, but I do think it would be good to have consensus about moving forward with this. I, there's no maliciousness involved in the proposal. I was aware of the fact that it's a useful thing and thought it would be good to bring it to the attention of councillors. Um, you could certainly argue that it should have come up in a report, but that's hardly my fault. Um, so I had Councillor Hesse. I've already heard from Councillor um, Passes, but I will come back to her for her clarification, and then Councillor De Cruz. I won't repeat what's been said earlier because I'm in general agreement with the concerns raised by Councillor Porteous and Councillor Passes, in fact. Um, but I will say generally that having been involved with the Main Street Committee in Newtown a number of years, a number of terms ago, it was a very positive experience. However, the, the use of the database and ultimately I'd be concerned that it would be used for campaigns other than it would be other, other than, I, I think we need to, for me the question is um, how they're used and I would ask the Mayor in fact to defer the matter so it comes back as a report we have, so we have more information. If because it's a Mayoral Minute I respect we can't amend it but I, and I respect the fact that the Mayor has made some changes but I do think that it would be better to defer it and come back with a full report. Thanks. Okay. Councillor, uh, Councillor Passes and Councillor De Cruz. Yeah I just wanted to ask. Um, yep. The staff are going to go around, as you said, to individual businesses. At the same time, are you going to pick out the illegal brothels or are they going to be classed as businesses? Because we have that many here in the inner west, maybe that could be done at the same time if I could add that. Well, I think the intention was that the chambers would, would control the project and that they would be hiring externally, not making use of council officers. So they'd be going around knocking on the illegal brothels, will they? Potentially. Mm. Councillor De Cruz. Um, yeah, I just had a question about the Marigold Business Association. They're not listed there. Should they be, or is that just an oversight, or they're not included, or is that the Marigold Chamber of Commerce is in fact the Marigold Business Association? Is that correct? I'll put that question to the Manager of Strategic Planning. We uh, through the chair. We've been working with the Marigold Business, uh, uh, sorry, the Marigold Chamber of Commerce. Um, we'd be able to talk to other associations as well as part of the project. 
Well, Councillor I, Macri to answer his question. I'd just like to make a plug for the Marrickville Business Association. Um, I'm a, um, they are actually quite active and I think out of all of these Chambers of Commerce as a small business, I've actually been to them and they held quite a few events in, in, in that industrial precinct down there. Um, so I think there's a bit of a little bit of concern as, and also to call it a database, if we're talking about a database, we're going to maintain some information. So it seems to me that it's more of a survey of, of businesses and also it's whether the scope is main streets, that kind of businesses or, I mean, there's a huge number of businesses which have very different functions. Um, if we're going, I mean, I, I, it's fine. Look at the main streets and, and bring in associations which focus on that. But I think that there needs to be some kind of scope and some kind of value put on what information we're going to get back out of this survey because there's certainly been lots of exercise and I think that's what the Maracle <laughs> Business Association actually does is yeah. Um, yeah. do it online website about all the websites with links and things like that. So I'm a little puzzled by what this project does. That's all. Okay. Councillors, it's five past seven. We're essentially asking for a report that would address the questions that have been raised by people. Is there anyone who actually wants to speak against the motion or can we just get on with the rest of the business? Councillor Stamoulis? Um, I, I think it's a very exciting idea creating a, a database uh, of businesses to use uh, strategically. It's also an, ex <coughs> an extremely complex idea as well. Um, and I'm wondering what thought process has gone into the construction of this database. Uh, I would expect that any sensible thinking of this uh, in terms of maintaining its usefulness going forward would be an extract from Council's business rates database. That's the only way that you're going to make sure that it is, um, that it is valid into the future unless you're going to take, undertake horrendous additional studies, uh, uh, business studies going into the future. So this, this will take a lot of time to set up. I think it's going to be very useful. We've got to make sure that uh, the items on it are very strategic items and we've got to make sure there's a way of updating this. I, I know in my old days of doing our business, our register uh, stuff at ABS, you know, we had a team of a dozen staff just to try to manage, 20 staff, trying to manage updates of business registers. It's a, it's a very, very complex, time-consuming thing to do, but you get great information from it. You get fantastic information from it, but it's a continuous investment. It is a continuous investment, and I think the best way of doing this would be to, to, uh, to extract from Council's own business rates database, not the detailed rates and things like that, and then add to it what you want to add to it uh, in, a, in an efficient way. Um, but that's the only way that this will be useful. If we're doing a one-off cut of this, it'll be out of date probably within about three months. But it's a great idea and I'll be voting for it. Excellent. So there's no one against it, so I'll make a very brief right of reply. I think all of the issues that have been raised by councillors have been um, contemplated by the business chambers in putting forward this proposal. Um, I think it'd be great for us to discuss it with them when we meet with them at the briefing session. There is a challenge in directly exporting Council's rates database and handing it over to a business chamber. We're prohibited from doing so, which is why they've proposed that we provide grant funding to them so that they can do it externally. I agree that there needs to be important privacy concerns and management of that database for it to be useful, but all of that can be addressed in the report. And um, look, it's been proposed by our local business representatives. Rather than second guessing it, let's work with them to try to make it happen. So that's why I've brought it forward tonight. So I'll put that motion. All those in favour? All those against? That has been carried with Councillor Hesse against. Next item. Item one, post exhibition report, draft Marrickville. All right, we have two registered speakers tonight. I'll move that we suspend standing orders to hear from our registered speakers. Will someone second that? We still need to hear from them first. Seconded by Councillor Passus. All those in favour? Against, declare that carried. Two registered speakers on this item. The first is Paul Davies from Balmain.
Thank you, Mayor. I'm speaking on behalf of the owners. Um, I prepared a, a heritage review of this, of this property. Um, I think it's interesting that, uh, like Dr Robertson, um, I was engaged actually after the event, so I was not part of the, of the DA process. I haven't even seen the DA, to be honest. Um, simply to look at the heritage values of this site and to review the various reports that have been done. So I came to this without any particular um, um, point of view in mind. I hadn't seen the property and I hadn't read their reports when I agreed to look at it. I think, too, it's important to say that tonight we're actually only looking at, or well, the council is only looking at the, um, at the heritage value of the property. This isn't a consideration of what might be on the table in terms of future development. Um, if council determined a heritage list, that obviously has a big impact on the DA and what might happen in the future in any case. So uh, I think that's also important to, to not confuse those issues. I think it's also worth noting that at least five consultants have looked at this property now. Now, it's really easy to sort of do a, a tally of who's for and who is against, but it actually doesn't help, particularly in heritage where people have different views. So even though there have been a range of views expressed both for and against the listing of this property by you know, quite well-respected heritage consultants on both sides, uh, that is not necessarily a measure of whether the property is significant or not. Because the only issue that you have to determine is whether the property is of sufficient heritage significance to actually move forward to a listing. I would also agree, and I, I would presume Dr Robertson would agree with this, that the place has at least some significance. We're not arguing that it has no significance at all. Um, most places in the inner west have a level of significance. Now, I've undertaken many heritage studies here. I've done Ashfield, I've done Marrickville, I did early ones for Leichhardt. And you're really looking at a grade of significance from sometimes buildings that are neutral, occasionally intrusive, although not that many, and then buildings that go right through to having extraordinary value. So it's where a building sits on that scale and whether it should be a heritage item. Um, I would also think it would be a reasonably fair summary to say that the significance that's being discussed about this particular property is really not related to the exterior. It's not that the exterior has no significance, it's just that the focus has been on the interior. And I think the reports have actually focused on that. And in particular, it's looking at um, some of the internal features. Um, I guess the two that would stand out would be the, um, the ingle nook and perhaps the, the joinery around the hallway. That is what has got the attention on this particular building. And I would have to agree that they're interesting. I don't have any issue with that. It's not that they have no interest or no significance at all. It's whether they're significant enough to actually go to a heritage listing. The only thing I really wanted to comment on about in terms of the various reports, and there has been a very large amount of material produced on this tiny house so far, um, and lots of details have been explored. But um, is that my time up? Oh, sorry about that. That's right. Just conclude your remarks. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Macri has moved an extension of one minute, seconded by Councillor Passus. All those in favour, against, declare that carried. Thank Please you very proceed, much. Sir. I just wanted to explore the notion of, it's come up a lot in the reports about what is exceptional. And there has been a debate about what that means. Um, putting aside the various interpretations of exceptional, I just wanted to put before the councillors that for me and in talking to people in the community, for something to be exceptional, it has to be really out there. It has to be outstanding. It has to grab your attention in a way that other things don't. Um, and whatever heritage value this property has, I do not believe it is exceptional. Um, I think that is an overstatement, and I know I disagree with Dr Robertson about that, but I think that's a very important point. I, have, um, I respect Dr Robertson's work and his research. I've looked as much of it as I possibly can in coming to the views that I've come to, but I cannot see how this property reaches a threshold for local listing. I have looked at hundreds and hundreds of properties in this area, and to me this property simply does not make that cut. Thank you. Thank you for that. And our second registered speaker is Soren Dane Holm of Dulwich Hill. Um, through the chat, just one clarification. When you said you were representing the owners, which property were you representing? Uh, I'm because sorry, you sorry, sir. I'll ask you to address your comments. Yeah, the through chair. the chair. Because yeah, it's, um, it's not an interrogation. I'm afraid. I'm not. But he said he was representing the owners. If he could clarify which owners he's representing. No, he's not required to do so. Please proceed. No with worries. Your comments. Um, I've been a resident and also um, Rajiv Country first, and pay my respects and acknowledgements to the Cadigal and Wangal um, elders. Um, 
I've lived on Dulwich Hill for 16 years. In that time, um, there hasn't been too much development of the freestanding houses that still exist um, at that address. Um, when the owner of 73A purchased the property, it was after um, the death of a member of the family that owned the two properties. Um, he subsequently put in for a DA to develop his family home with, I don't think, him expecting to be hemmed in by apartment blocks on three sides if the um, proposed development of 73 had gone ahead. 73 um, and 73A aren't remarkable looking from the outside, they are facades. But when you're talking in heritage terms, what do make them ex um, exceptional is the craftsmanship, the artmanship, the materials and the area that they were um, built in. Um, if other properties in the inner west want to be refurbished and restored, if we have no examples of from that period, where are you going to find the craftsmen to train to be able to bring up other properties to scratch? Also, in relation to the general streetscape of the boulevard, my street's only about 75 metres long. There are 500 residents in there. There are only 12 freestanding homes. The rest of it is apartment blocks. That's it. I actually love where I live. I've been there for 16 years. And we don't need another apartment block. And um, the other only other significant thing would be the tree, which has probably been there for 100 years out the front, the pine tree. Thanks, councillors. OK, thank you very much for that. That concludes both of our registered speakers. I'll go to councillors. Councillor Macri. Chair, I'd like to move uh, the deferral of this item for a site inspection so we can go down and have a look. You wish to speak to it? I'm happy to speak to it. I, I think it's important that councillors are familiar with the area and being part of the council that actually put in the LEP, I brought the actual zoning maps with me here if anyone wants to have a look at them and what the zoning of those properties are. And the boulevard was zoned for units, one part of it, where we had to keep, where we wanted to keep the most impact and the pristine houses was at the other side of the boulevard. And in, when you're creating an LEP, which we will go through, there will be a target set on actually how many dwellings we need to achieve. The only way to orderly do this is to work out what you can retain and what's worthy of retention and what's not. And if we start actually going for disorderly development, we're moving away from delivering better outcomes to the area because there's no security for anyone who actually looks at a zoning map and actually buys a property for whatever reason they want to buy it for. They might want to have it as their home, they might want to develop it into a block of units, but you must provide that security. It's a bit like, this process has been a little bit like driving down Sydenham Road, doing 60 kilometres, and then being pulled up by a police officer, and the police officer says to you, uh, do you know how fast you were going? You say, yes, officer, I was doing 60 kilometres. Yep, I'm going to book you because I think you should be at 50 kilometre zone. And you're getting forced a penalty on them. And it's, it's not really the right thing to do. I am challenged by the level of interest here was only generated after a DA went in, where there was no interest. It's survived and been overlooked in, I think, three previous heritage studies. And as I said, I have all the zoning maps here if people want to look at them and they can see how we orderly plan development in the area, knowing what we wanted to keep and what was important. And that's the way the process happens. And we'll have to do this same thing when we're doing the LEP. And you need to refer the, to those documents to understand what our job as councillors are because I think Paul Davies did our LEP heritage study and I still remember the briefings we had, and the best way to protect heritage is to create the heritage conservation areas where we say, these streets are intact, we want to maintain the character of those streets. Well, predominantly, the boulevard was already well established with units, and we said, okay, well, that will be units. And then the other side will maintain as normal housing. So I think you can't 
save everything, but you should save the things you can save, but not in an ad hoc approach. It has to be in a structured process. Otherwise, it just loses integrity of any plans or no one can have any confidence in actually coming to our area. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Passage with the second up. Just quickly. Whether you believe this property has heritage merit or not, that's one side of the story. The other side is morally, what we're doing is wrong. For whatever reason, if you say it was left out of the studies previously, you cannot move to put an heritage order on a property because somebody lodged a DA. That part of Dully Chill of the Boulevard is a mismatch of everything. The left hand side is beautiful, pristine, not a block of units inside. You cannot, on the request of one person, it's like Ned Kelly without a gun. You're putting a gun to your neighbour that in good faith did his homework, purchased the property with an idea in mind, and then what did we do? Put a gun to his head, you can't proceed. Morally, this is wrong. And I've looked at the property and the interior. You tell me one heritage property in the inner west with well-heeled people have not changed it completely, have not changed the interior completely. You can't have heritage just when you feel like it and what you believe it to be. If we're really heritage people, tell me one property where the residents still use the old dunny out the back. All the interiors have been changed. No heritage merit whatsoever. And if there are any properties intact, it's because somebody lived in it, were elderly, didn't have the funds or the inclination to renovate, and the family waited till they died and moved on. So I forget all the heritage aspects of it, which there are none, but morally you cannot do this to people. Thank you for that. Councillor Drury. Thank you, Mayor. At the risk of appearing immoral, I wish to move the officer's recommendation. Well, I've been smart about moral guardian. <laughs> I understand why this property wouldn't have been picked up That's as part of a conservation area. Yeah. However, I believe the proponent's heritage architect put succinctly on his talk to date that the place has significance. The question is how much significance? Council has spent ratepayers' money. We have employed a heritage architect. We've written a report, and that report tells us it has significance. We've paid for that. We've asked the question. It has significance. It's very clear. If you read the report, see all the pictures, beautiful, weird-looking bath tiles, all that sort of stuff, it's all there. It's all there. So, we can flap around, tromp all over the carpet, or we can get on with it, and list it as a local heritage, uh, an item of local heritage significance. Because that's the advice we've been given. There's been a lot of community look at, look at this issue, over 400 look at it, lots of submissions. It's not something that's gone quietly. The one point that I will agree with is that perhaps this item should have been picked up earlier. It should have been picked up earlier should have been declared as a heritage item. It's an omission, but it's an omission we can fix, and we can fix it tonight. We can fix it tonight. All we need is a majority of people, and it's fixed. I'd urge every, all, all of you to think about that. Okay, so we've got a um, motion from Councillor Macri and Councillor Passus for deferral, uh, pending a site inspection. Uh, a foreshadowed motion from uh, Councillor Drury for adoption of the officer's recommendation. 
Um, I'll speak very briefly to say that I'm happy to go out on site to have a look at the item um, and so don't have a problem supporting the motion for deferral. Further discussion, councillors? Councillor Stamoulis. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, in terms of this, uh, the boulevard needing additional units, I, I certainly don't think it does. In terms of these two properties being heritage, I'm really unsure. Uh, certainly, as Councillor Drury, Drury has pointed out, uh, Council can commission a report to give us all the advice in favour of our, what we want, and similarly, the applicant can uh, commission a report to, uh, to give all the advice in favour of what the applicant wants. We know this is a standard practice for all those councils that have been around uh, many, many years. Uh, so, to me, the, the dilemma is we... The, the key to this is, are these heritage items, are these significant? And I live in, a, I live in uh, the old Leichhardt municipality where we had 900 significant items. So I'm very familiar with walking past them every single day in multitude. Uh, and in conservation areas, I think the whole of uh, Leichhardt was virtually a conservation area. So I'm very familiar with all of that. These two I wasn't quite so familiar with, so I'll be supporting uh, that we defer this item for a site inspection, but I'm going to make the following requirement uh, if, if, it's, uh, if uh, Councillor Macri and Councillor Hassas are happy with this. I don't think it's good enough, and, and I went out there and visited the pro uh, properties on Sunday so I could have a look myself, but I need further information than that. I would like, in attendance at that site inspection, an amendment to be made that in attendance will be a heritage officer who, if they can really, really try to give us unbiased information, that would be absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to ask that we do have this site inspection and that we receive a very flat interpretation of heritage principles so that councillors can make up their own minds about it. Thank you. I think we can require a heritage officer to attend. I've yet to come across one who can offer an objective opinion. But, uh, so I don't know if we can specify that in the resolution, but I'll let you liaise with the minute takers about that wording. Now, councillors, it's 7.30. We've got a primary motion um, from Councillor Macri and Councillor Passus. We've got a, a foreshadowed motion moved by Councillor Drury, seconded by Councillor Porteous. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Porteous? Well, I'll just say that uh, I think it's a good report. I think this has been well argued by the council staff and we should move ahead and, and, and uh, support the, the recommendation, which is why okay. I'm happy Thank to Thank you for that. that. Is there anyone who wishes to move a further amendment to either of the motions? So, has Councillor... I'll ask Councillor Macri whether he's willing to incorporate the... I presume so, for a heritage officer to attend the site inspection. Anyone else who wishes to amend either of the motions? If not, we'll deal with the primary motion. If it's defeated, we'll consider the foreshadowed motion. Councillor Porteous is the seconder of the foreshadowed motion. The primary motion requires an amendment for a heritage officer to attend, which is not on the screen I'm by my inspection. That's right. <coughs> Okay, so I'll put the primary motion. All those in favour? Oh, sorry, Councillor Macri, right of reply. Chair, just, just in case people think there's a lot that has escaped the net in the actual heritage study, I'll just hold up that. I don't know if you can see that. Those are the conservation areas. I'm happy to pass it around if you think you need a moment to have a close inspection of it. It's not, it's not that the area is devoid. It is that this isn't different from any other one of those places in the area. We're not lo losing something new, unique or different that we haven't got elsewhere in those areas in an intact setting. That's, that's what it really is about. And I urge councillors, really, you really have to go down there and have a look at this to get a full understanding of that and how it works. And, and don't just look where it is. Get there a bit earlier and actually walk on the other side of the boulevard and see how a heritage conservation area and heritage preservation actually works to benefit the area rather than this ad hoc approach. That's, that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to get in there and make yourself familiar with it. That's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now put the primary motion. All those in favour, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those against? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That has been defeated. I'll now put the foreshadowed motion. 
Moved by Councillor Drury, seconded by Councillor Porteous. All those in favour, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All those against? One, two, three, four, five. That has been carried. Next item. Thanks very much for coming along. Next item, item two, New South Wales Government reduction in parking fine amounts. Yes. Councillor Passes. I'm absolutely shocked that we're knocking this back, trying to give something back to our residents, and I'll be voting against it. Really? Why should we not reduce the parking fines? And we're not going to lose that much money. You put parking permits in, you're making money from that. So this is wrong. If there is a way that we can reduce a bit of bur burden on the residents, we should be doing it. Thank you for that. I might just speak briefly in support of the officer's recommendation. I, I note that um, when this was announced, I did um, an interview with ABC Television, I believe it was, and invited um, Treasurer Perrottet to adopt our proposal, our, our, our policy, not our proposal, of turning parking metres off after seven o'clock and implementing 30-minute free parking in all New South Wales government um, parking metres. Now, he's declined to take up that. That would have a much greater revenue impact on the New South Wales government than the somewhat um, symbolic gesture that he has enacted. There are some councillors, councils in New South Wales that have um, taken up this suggestion or this offer. I wish that they had been listed in the report because I got a list of them recently and they were... They are all, uh, they were at that stage, they were all in rural areas, places that don't have parking metres, in essence. So there's been no substantive change in any metropolitan council as far as I'm aware. So I'd just like to amend the recommendation to note that council has um, already turned off parking metres at night, uh, uh, after 7pm, in Main Streets, in Leichhardt, Roselle and Balmain, and... Um, has implemented 30-minute free parking uh, at suburb, at those, in those suburbs, at main streets in those suburbs as well. I'll liaise with the minute takers about that wording. And I would like, for the record, to extend that offer again to Treasurer Perrottet to adopt our more generous proposal in New South Wales parking metres. Councillor Stamoulis. Um, Mr Mayor, I'd like to propose a foreshadowed motion that Council does opt in to enact the lower parking fines and we do take that opportunity in respect of the many business areas that we have in our community. Uh, I, I acknowledge that um, we, we've tried many, many things uh, for our residents to resolve, uh, to re resolve issues of parking, 15-minute par parking, 30-minute parking, parking after 7pm, reducing the parking fee. We've done everything possible Everything has delivered a marginal gain. I'm not going to say they, they haven't, been, uh, um, haven't been useful in some form, but they have not been useful in big form. Uh, they haven't delivered for our businesses. We've got major vacancies uh, occurring in our main streets, and this is the issue that we have to deal with. Um, our parking metre fees, our fines, are too high in New South Wales, and our council is the second highest of all 130 councils in New South Wales in parking fine issuance. That is not a good record to have. That is not a very good record to have, being the second highest uh, fine issuer in New South, of all New South Wales councils. So we are, and we are getting a noted reputation for this, and that immediately is going to drive people away. We want to bring people in. We want to make sure uh, that we do have opportunities for them to stay. In fact, they should not have parking meters in some locations at all. It's quite clear, they should, they, should be, they should be gone, totally gone, and the fines themselves should be reduced as another way to assist our business community. Uh, we're creaming off a lot of money here, fellow councillors, and we've been doing it far too many years at the expense of our business villages, our commercial districts, and it's time that we bit the bullet a little bit and gave some relief uh, to our local businesses.
na ko Yes. Case, I'm sorry. It's not needed in this case. So please, uh, Mr. Mayor, we are going against a recommendation and we're saying to waive a certain amount of a fee. We can, we'll leave it up to the officers to find an alternative source. Tell us how much you're getting from parking permits and when people have to replace ones that are lost. Tell me how much you're getting off parking permits when people go after one month and new ones come in and have to pay Point for the water, man. How much revenue are we making from those? Okay. I'm going to rule that Councillor Passis was making a contribution. Um, I, I'll go back to Councillor Passis, uh, to Councillor Stamless to identify the funding source. Councillor Porteous. Um, yeah, look, I think that um, there's possibly a third way. Look, there is a real issue with parking fines for some people. For some people paying $112, that's, you know, that's a reasonable parking fine because they've done something wrong and they should rightfully, um, and that should be acknowledged financially. For other people, um, particularly people who are on um, pensions, fixed incomes, um, unfortunately what happens is that fines can spiral out of control so that they don't just get one fine, they get two fines or three fines, not because they get fines more often than other people, but simply they cannot pay them. And, and that then becomes an issue in terms of um, where they are with the courts, whether they end up in prison. It, it actually is quite a serious issue. And I think what council should be addressing is the issue of hardship and where fines are creating unreasonable hardships on people, because there, there is a stronger case for asking what can council do about it. Um, I, I, so I'm, what I'm proposing is that, um, because what we do have with this option is that there have been a number of dates that have been identified as dates that we can opt in or opt out. And certainly I wouldn't be wanting to consider this anyway without looking at the budget implications of it. It would make sense for us to defer this until we actually consider the budget. And then when we look at the budget to ask, is there a way that we can address this which would address the financial hardship of those that are genuinely finding it difficult and are genuinely incurring consequences because of the cost of the, the, um, the fines. So what I'm proposing is a, is a motion. Um, it's actually been sent to the minute taker by Councillor Kiep. Yep. Um, because we work very collaboratively in the Greens. We do. And uh, the wording of that is that Council defer the decision to be considered as part of the budget process with additional advice in relation to how Council does and can deal with hardship applications in relation to parking fines. Um, so I'll, I, we've actually got a foreshadowed motion, but I'll just uh, flag that as a foreshadowed motion if that foreshadowed motion uh, doesn't proceed. Well, that is so collaborative and sensible. I'm going to suggest that that become the primary motion. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what, it's a new era here at Council. We're all working together. So uh, <laughs> Councillor Porteous can become the seconder for that motion. I'll become the mover for deferral of the matter for... Um, well, you said it better than me. I'll it's wait for the, the wording, got the wording. Yeah. Wait for the wording yeah. to appear oh, on the screen. The um, so, whilst uh, I'll go back to Councillor Stamlos before we go on, but I think maybe we've got a way forward here that keeps the issue under consideration. I, obviously, everyone is aware in the room that a two point five million dollars spending commitment without a revenue source would need to be ruled out of order, including including Councillor Stamlos. But can I suggest that we move forward with the deferral? and that we consider the matter as part of the budget and uh, including the issue of hardship as reflected in the wording. Councillor Stamos, have you got a funding source? Uh, Mr Mayor, I, I'm very happy that I, that I raised this foreshadowed motion because now I think we've reached in our debate a, a, a very good compromise and, and Council can keep on taking its revenue off its, uh, off its citizens as much as it likes and shoppers. Yeah. Okay, now, given we've got this emerging consensus, do we really need to debate it further, Councillor de Cruz? Can I just make one point which seems to have been overlooked? This is actually parking fines relating to people parking in resident parking areas and exceeding their time. So there are two issues here, um, because I don't think it's come out clearly, so maybe when we defer it... Well, in Annandale and in the inner city, it does count because commuters park there all the time. To compare it with parking in the city at fifty dollars, it's quite a significant issue. So, I think just be aware it's not just parking meter area that's being covered here. Okay, thank you for that. I'm going to refrain from making a right of reply. 
in the interest of getting on with the business. I'll put the Byrne Porteous recommendation. All those in favour? Against? <coughs> Declare that carried unanimously. Excellent. Next item. Historic fee waivers for various swimming and water polo clubs. May I speak on this? Yes, Councillor Passes. Where you find in that source of revenue? Where you find in this source of revenue? Sorry, you have the floor, Councillor Passes. I am moving refusal of this, and I want to know: Are we going to waive the fees for swimming uh, school clubs, school swimming lessons? hydrotherapy people that are using it, aqua aerobics. Why are we waiving the fees for people that use the play polo? And I would like you, Mr Mayor, to tell me where, getting the mo where are we getting the money from? Where's the, re um, the resource uh, funding? Where's it coming from? You can't not reduce the fees on parking fines when we have the opportunity, yet on the next page, give certain people dispensation that they, they don't have to pay to use our pools. And I can, I'm just waiting. Maybe 2025, that's when the Asheville pool will be finished, that we'll get a motion asking to waive the fees on the polo users there. Now that we're just building them a million dollar pool uh, asset, this is discriminatory. It's not on, it's wrong. And I don't know how anybody could give this report and I don't know how anyone could even ask for this report. The height of these people asking for a fee waiver. And previously, we don't even want to reduce the parking fines. Something that people have to use every day to go about their life. Not go down and play polo and aspire to go to the Olympics. I just don't believe this. I remove refusal against this recommendation 150%. Okay. If you could provide that word into the minute takers, please, Councillor um, Passes. Is there a seconder for that primary motion from Councillor Passes? Sorry, uh, was it, is she moving as... Refusal. As, yeah. uh, refusal. Well, I'll, that's not actually a motion, but Councillor Passes can provide that. So there's a seconder in Councillor Macri. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Macri? Okay, he'll reserve his right. Councillors, further discussion? Yeah. Councillor Porteous? Look, I'll move the primary motion and I'd like to move an amendment oh, to the primary motion as well and I'll speak to it as well. Um, but I would appreciate it if Councillor Passes would give me the floor, if you could hold it until Councillor Passes has got... I'll call the meeting to order. Um, Get on with the business. Councillor Porteous has the floor. First of, first of all, the um, clubs that do uh, historically get fee waivers at Leichhardt Aquatic Centre and Dawn Fraser Bars, everybody is a volunteer. Everybody works really hard. Everybody works for the local community. Um, they are... Order meeting to order. They are clubs which are reaching out right across the inner west. They have members right across the inner west. And um, I think we're really lucky to have them, basically, because... They in, um, develop an enormous amount of community spirit uh, locally. They're very important for the young people that are coming through. And we've actually developed a lot of our champion swimmers and our champion water polo players um, through these clubs. And again, many, many hours which are dedicated by um, volunteers to um, enable this to happen. But um, So I'm happy to endorse this process moving forward. And I would like to see in the future... Um, that we also develop a, a, a full criteria for the, um, the way that we allocate fee waivers moving forward. But I think in the short term, this is a, this is a way forward in the short term. And in the longer term, I'd like, like us to see developing full criteria and full assessment so that we're, we're making everything even more transparent. And it does concern me, for example, that at the two uh, privately operated aquatic centres, the Fanny Durack and the... Um, Annette Kellerman, that we don't have fee waivers, essentially, and fee reductions. And I do question why that is, because having a lot of experience with like Leichhardt Aquatic Centre, um, I know, you know, how, how, how important it is for the community that we have these various organisations that are able to get these fee waivers. It enables them to do things they would, simply wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Um, but look, I want to add another amendment to this, which is really important, and I've given this uh, to the minute taker. 
Uh, we introduced at Leichhardt Aquatic Centre a, a concession rate for swims. This is a concession rate which is specifically for people... Uh, no, no, it's different. No, it's different, Colin. Uh, it's a concession rate uh, and it's specifically for people who receive a pension or a health card, who have a pension or a health card. It's a $1 rate for a swim and we specifically introduced it because we wanted to have as much equity as possible to enable everybody to be able to use our pools. So it allows those people and their children, if they are on the card, to pay only a dollar in order to come and have a swim in the Leichhardt Aquatic Centre. I think it would be good if we could seek to extend that to all of our aquatic centres moving forward. So what I'm proposing that, again, in the budget, we give consideration to inclusion uh, of these concession rate to all of our aquatic centres. I mean, obviously Ashfield's offline at the moment. And uh, so that we're enabling this greater um, equity uh, and, and not excluding people because, for example, a casual swim at the Leichhardt Aquatic Centre is $8.50. But by charging just $1 for, for people who are on a pension, we're enabling many more people to come. And I know personally that people come from all over Sydney, actually, to Leichhardt Aquatic Centre because they can access that $1 yeah, so your time has expired. So I think it would be great if we could extend that to all of our aquatic centres. Your Thanks. time has expired. Is there a seconder for the Porteous motion? Seconded by Councillor Lockie. Do you wish to speak to a councillor, Lockie? No? Um, yes. Can I just ask, um, through the chair to the, to the relevant group manager, about what process we do have in place at the moment for determining applications for fee waivers? Um, through that question to the manager of aquatics, uh, through the chair, I believe um, the process that we are undertaking is a historical process, so the clubs that um, have historically had fee waivers um, are, are simply requesting for them again year on year um, and for the two facilities that are privately operated there's simply no clubs in existence there that are requesting fee waivers so essentially we have historical fee waivers um, based at Leichhardt Aquatic Centre and Thorn Fraser Baths and Ashfield um, which is currently closed. Okay thank you for that. Councillor de Cruz. Um, through the Chair, could the officer fill us in on what's happening with the MOU with Water Polo in New South Wales in regard to the Ashfield pool and whether that could be extended to the Leichhardt pools? I'll put that question to the Manager of Aquatics. Um, through the Chair, um, the Water Polo, Water Polo New South Wales committed to ongoing um, bookings and access and use of the Ashfield Aquatic Centre upon completion. Um, any further request, um, I guess, to consider uh, further commitments, you know, we'd have to go back to them to seek an adjustment or otherwise. Um, I'd like to move an amendment that we actually approach both um, Water Polo New South Wales and the universities because, um, and also I wasn't, uh, it will actually approach the universities, both UTS and UNSW. Um, to seek funding um, to support um, these kinds of fee waivers as well because um, the universities have, are quite flush with funds and they are using these facilities. So I think I'd like to move that as an amendment. Okay, can you provide that wording to the minute taker, please? Councillors, we've got a primary motion from Councillor Passus, seconded by Councillor Macri. I'll ask the minute takers to scroll up so we can have a look at that. Council moved refusal of the fee waiver request. Yes. And then a foreshadowed motion from Councillor Porteous and Councillor Lockie um, for adoption of the officer's recommendation with the additional amendment that consideration be given in the 2019-20 budget for uh, about concession swim rates. Um, and then a further amendment from Councillor de Cruz, which is to be provided to the minute takers. Are you willing to incorporate that, Councillor Porteous? Uh, sorry, I've got a further amendment. Right. The, f the further amendment was actually to investigate having the pools open till 9 o'clock. So I've actually raised this with the officer, but I'd like to put it formally in, in here to bring a report back to Council about extending the hours of pools. Okay. Thank you for that. Would a mayor feel like we're starting to draw some pretty long bows off a motion which is ostensibly about the historic arrangement at Thorn Fraser and uh, the Leichhardt Aquatic 
I understand the point of order. I'm going to rule that Councillor de Cruz's second proposal um, would need to be moved as a matter arising. It's not directly related to the primary motion. And I'm going to ask Councillor de Cruz to provide the wording of both those amendments to the minute taker so that we can get on with the business. just received some advice from Mr Naylor about um, a provision in the new um, model code which doesn't allow for matters arising to be moved. I'll just seek advice from clarification about that advice from him. Through the Chair, there was a practice previously of raising matters arising but um, advice from the Office of Local Government with the new meeting code that came in December is you, you can't raise a matter arising to a motion on the floor you need to submit it as a notice of motion. Okay, so I'm going to rule the second point, amendment point out of order. order. We actually have the new um, code of meeting practice on exhibition. It came off exhibition today. It hasn't been adopted by council, so the current code of meeting practice applies, and that allows. I'll get the some advice about that point of order, Mr. Naylor. Um, through the chair, we sought advice from the office. Matters arising were never ever allowed under the code of meeting practice previously was just a practice that was adopted. Okay, I'm going to rule the second. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Councillors. I'll withdraw two. Great, that helps. excellent. Well, it was out of order anyway. Councillor Macri. Chair, when this item came to us uh, the last time, the matter was deferred for the report to come back with the grounds which the actual fees were being waived. And I don't remember reading anywhere in the fees where historical is an actual reason you can uh, actually waive something. It's not in our fees and charges. There is no reference to historical. Um, and uh, the fee waiver of no charge, the program aims to support community groups with limited income to provide programs and activities that benefit local community and their members. Well, that's based on the predication that there's no money being paid to participate in these activities. That is the clear recommendation. I don't even know if this council really has the power to waive those fees because they haven't got a ground to waive them on because historical is not in the fees and charges, is not in any of the documentation. And I'm struggling with the debate around this table because... There's no identification where the $150,000 grant is going to come from. Show me where that grant is going to come from. Are we going to stop cutting some verges? What are we, what are we going to do? So I think realistically, I will seek clarification on this from the Department of Local Government if we have the power to do this under our current controls. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. So, Councillor Porteous, are you willing to incorporate the amendment from Councillor de Cruz into your motion? Come on. Can I just say, I, um, I understand what Councillor Macri is saying. I think it's not good enough to say that these are just historical, and I think it's not good enough that these only apply in one area of the LGA and not other areas. So I would like to see some more transparency around these decisions, and I hope that, that we work toward that. Okay, thank you for that. We've got the primary motion moved by Councillor Passer, seconded by Councillor Macri for refusal of the fee waiver requests. We've got the foreshadowed motion for adoption of the officer's recommendation with a couple of minor amendments. I'll put the primary motion, if that's defeated, we'll deal with the foreshadowed motion. All those in favour of the primary motion, please raise your hands. Councillor Passis, Councillor Rossidi, Councillor Macri. Councillor Drury, were you raising your hand for that? Sorry, primary motion. I'll recommit that vote. All those in favour of the primary motion, please raise your hands. That's councillors Passis, Rossidi and Macri. All those against, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
That has been defeated. I'll put the foreshadowed motion. All those in favour, please raise your hands. All those against, that has been carried. Next item, half yearly progress report on the operational plan. Councillors, discussion. Any discussion? If not, will someone move the office's Actually, recommendation? Uh, Councillor Stamoulos will move the recommendation. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor? No? Councillor De Cruz. I just have a question. I understand this report goes to ARIC. Um, and normally, in, in that event, um, the minutes from ARIC would come to us so we can see what comments were made, if any, through the chair. Can somebody answer that? Because it would be useful if we actually saw the minutes of the ARIC committee meeting. I'll put that question to the officers. Uh, it's through the chair. Uh, this report is required under the Hospital Local Government uh, legislation, but it doesn't go to ARIC, so it won't be reflected in the minutes. Okay, further discussion, councillors. I'll ask if there's a seconder for Councillor Stamoulis' motion, seconded by Councillor Drury. Any further discussion? If not, I'll put that. All those in favour? Against? Declare that carried unanimously. Next item, Model Code of Conduct. May I, may I move this? Well, yes. No I'll, I'll note, really, we don't have much choice but to accept this. I'll also note that this continues to contain an idiotic complaint process which is bound to end in tears every time and not to very good outcomes for our community. I just think we shouldn't waste our breath. We should just pass it and move on to the next item. <coughs> okay, thank you for that. Is there a seconder? Councillor Porteous? Councillor Lockie, will you second it? Do you wish to speak to it? No? Councillor Porteous? Yeah, look, um, and I did raise this with, um, sorry, Ian, I've forgotten your title, <laughs> Executive Support Officer, um, but it, I thought it was a bit odd that we're not actually putting it out for public exhibition because normally any policies we would put out for public exhibition. I know the response, and I don't want to verbal you, but I probably will end up doing it, um, was that... Um, there's no point because we, we're going to have to adopt it. But having said that, there's not, like, time-wise, it has to be adopted by the end of June. And as Councillor Drury has rightly pointed out, there's some idiotic stuff in here. And I actually think it's probably worthwhile us putting it out on public exhibition so we get some response back from the public about what they think it, it works and doesn't work in this code of conduct. Because if nothing else, we can feed that back to the Office of Local Government about what our community thinks about this code of conduct. If we just adopt it, it, it vicariously, it, it basically is saying, well, we're okay with it, and I think that we're not really okay with it. Um, so I think it, and, and just in terms of process, I mean, it w you know, this is the sort of thing that would normally always go out on public exhibition, and, I, and I'm, I feel just adopting it is, is not great process for us. So I'd like to do it collegiately if possible, but I would, like to, uh, but otherwise maybe move as a foreshadow that um, we put this out in public exhibition for 28 days as, as per usual and, and, then, and then bring it back to, to council. Um, so we give the a community a, a, the opportunity to, to make comment on, on this uh, code of conduct. Is there a is seconder for Councillor Porteous' foreshadowed motion? For, uh, seconded by Councillor Kiat. Do you wish to speak to it? Briefly. Yes. I just want to say that um, the reports that we've received about code of conduct complaints show that most of them come from the community. Um, so it isn't just a document about us complaining about each other. Um, so I think it is appropriate that it go on public exhibition. Okay, thank you for that. There's no further discussion. Councillor Stamoulis. Just a question through the Chair to the General Manager, thank you. Um, yes. Uh, item number two of the motion, who are council officials and what sort of training are they going to receive? Thank you. Okay, I'll put that question to the officers. Uh, through the chair, um, council officials, uh, staff, councillors, and any any function of council that's delegated to another body. So a delegate to council would be the audit and risk committee, um, members of um, council's traffic committee. Uh, so the Office of Local Government has provided specific cut down versions of the code of conduct for. Uh, people on those delegated committees and so we'll be providing that when it's adopted to those committees and um, providing 
uh, a support for them if they have any further um, questions about the obligations of the code in their work. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor, is there any further discussion? Let's keep going. I'll put the um, primary motion moved by Councillor Dury and seconded by Councillor Lockie. If that's defeated, we'll then consider the foreshadowed motion. All those in favour of the primary motion, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All those against? One, two, three, four, five. Get that right? Yeah, that's 13. Louis out. That has been carried. Next item. Item six, notice of motion. Compost toilets. I didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> Councillor de Cruz. Thank you. So um, a composting toilet was installed at White's Creek. Um, and um, but the idea was never actually followed through, so the community has never used the compost that comes out of this. The cleaners are face, uh, required to deal with the night soil, which isn't very pleasant. So um, hence, I've just sent an amendment through because I understand that there's, there is a, the funding of $5,000 can be found to actually review the, the composting and look at adapting it to a conventional toilet. Um, there are public toilets underneath, so there isn't so it shouldn't be too much of a drama about it connecting to plumbing and sewerage. So have you got my amendment for point one? Yep. So um, on, the, on the officer's advice, there is money available to do the review and possibly to undertake the work, hence the amended uh, motion one. And motion two is um, White's Creek Cottage was actually cons uh, was actually renovated and is a community facility with um, with significant sustainability um, features such as um, connection of water tanks um, to the building, um, but obviously not to the composting toilet, but to the other toilets for um, use. Um, uh, but I think that they, since two thousand and nine, the technology for sustainability has moved on and there may be opportunities to make the facility even more sustainable. So, um, hence my motion. Thank you. Okay, I'm a little confused. I have no problem supporting um, item one in the motion. I'm, I'm gonna have to seek some advice about item two, which I also don't have a problem with, but the officers tell us that it will cost $5,000 to produce a report. Sorry, that's not correct. Within six months. Well, that's what it says in the business papers. Um, <coughs> I would have thought there isn't a time frame that's specified in Councillor de Cruz's motion, so it could simply be incorporated into the regular review process, in which case it wouldn't have an externalised cost. So I'll seek advice from the Deputy General Manager about that $5,000 cost or whether the work could simply be incorporated into the work plan. Uh, through the Chair, Councillors, um, the $5,000 that was quoted um, within the officer's comment on the report was around the cost that would be required um, for council to uh, engage a consultant to undertake a review um, so that we can understand the complexities <coughs> of converting um, the sustainable compost toilet um, into uh, a normal toilet that's hooked up to water and, um, and sewer, etc. So um, until we get that, until we expend that $5,000 and understand what we're dealing with down there, um, we um, may or may not be able to do it within existing budget. So if w what we've suggested to um, Councillor de Cruz um, earlier this week is that if we can um, do it within existing budgets, we'll complete that conversion as soon yep, as possible. Yep, so it's dealt with with her amendment. Yep. Excellent. Okay, no problem. That's, uh, is there a seconder for the motion? Seconded by Councillor Hesse, who doesn't need to speak to it. I'll put that, all those in favour. Oh, okay, sorry. No, no, the, uh, Chair, <laughs> Chair, I am shocked and appalled that the Greens on this council can take such a retrograde step as to remove an environmentally sensitive toilet in this municipality. I am going to get on the phone, I'm going to ring the North Coast Greens and I'm going to tell the environmental Greens up there, the people who actually love the environment, that these inner city backsliders, these political apparatchiks are against composting dummies. This is an outrage. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You're not Greens. 
Councillor Drury had assured me prior to the meeting that an officer had asked him on the way in to limit himself to only necessary contributions and even then to be less than two minutes. And he's completely broken that promise. <laughs> I'll put the De Cruz Hesse recommendation. All those in favour? Against? <laughs> Carried with Councillor Drury against. Next item, I understand, Councillor Stamlos, that following your tabling of this motion that the officers have simply agreed to repair the fence, which seems like a very sensible outcome and that you're willing to withdraw the motion. Is that correct? Excellent. Thank you for raising it. That motion is withdrawn. Councillor York, item eight. Um, I, briefly, councillors, I share um, Councillor Stamlos' interest in gender equality and so the occasion of International Women's Day... Uh, <laughs> Uh, reminded me um, that there was an opportunity to bring this matter for Council's consideration. It's simply that um, it, I, I'm sure you're all aware that there's a, a gross gender inequality in um, uh, both the participation and recruitment and retention of girls, um, young women and, and women through the career life cycle um, in STEM, so in science, technology, engineering and maths. Um, and it also occurred to me that in those sectors in this council, we have a number of very successful, very senior women who are doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And that's something um, that we should all be proud of and celebrate, but also I think that we should take the opportunity to um, share with um, some young women in the local council area um, through either a traineeship program or a work experience program. So this um, motion simply um, requests that council um, uh, undertake one of the, one of those programs, um, which I think would go a long way to encouraging girls and young women in the inner west um, to explore their interest in STEM topics. Okay. Is there a seconder for that motion? Seconded by Councillor Porteous. Do you wish to speak to it? Um, no, just uh, like to um, thank Councillor York for bringing this motion to Council. I think it builds on the excellent work certainly that has been done previously in Leichhardt Council, and I understand there's been a, um, good work that's been done in the other councils as well um, in terms of uh, enabling and empowering women to take on um, leadership roles within the organisation. And um, I think that's something which always needs to be front and foremost um, in terms of the way we approach um, our, um, our uh, res responsibilities towards the staff and I'm particularly pleased to see it in the week uh, of International Women's Day. Thanks. I'll now put that. All those in favour? All those against? Please raise your hand. All done. Carried unanimously. Item nine, I believe, needs to be dealt with, dealt with in Committee of the Whole. Or what's, what are we calling it now? Confidential session. <laughs> Will someone move that we move into confidential session? Moved by Councillor Lockie, seconded by Councillor Porteous. All those in favour? Against? Declare that carried. I'll ask for the members of the public to depart the chamber momentarily while we consider this matter, matter in confidence. clarification about whether we need to turn the microphones off. Great. Okay, councillors.